Lissa Productions. Welcome to Experimental Physics. Uh, your first experiment will be a measurement of the hydrogen spectrum. And the objective of this experiment is to help you gain some insight into the structure of atoms by measuring and analyzing the spectrum of hydrogen, the simplest atom in the periodic table. The apparatus is also fairly simple. We'll be using a diffraction grating spectrometer. And I've sketched a schematic diagram of the apparatus here. We'll show you the details of the instrument itself in just a few minutes. What we have is a variable slit at the entrance of the instrument and the light from the hydrogen spectrum tube passes through the slit. The slit is adjustable to allow you to change the amount of light that enters and then the light passes through a diffraction grating uh, right in front of the eyepiece which is engineered to guide your eye to look through the diffraction grating and toward an illuminated scale. So we represent the observer with a little eyeball looking through the eyepiece. The scale allows you to make the measurements of the wavelength and what you see if you look through the eyepiece is a scale that's labeled from 400 to 700. The units on the scale are nanometers. The resolution of the scale is 10 nanometers per division, but what you should do is not be satisfied simply rounding off the readings to the nearest scale division. Instead, try to locate the position of the line as precisely as you feel that you are justified in doing to some fraction of a division perhaps. Now everyone should be able to observe the red line in the hydrogen spectrum which is the brightest of the visible lines and also the blue line and the first of two violet lines. You might not be able to see the second violet line depending on the quality of the spectrum tube that you have. There are some real physical reasons why you might not be able to and we'll get into the physics of atomic structure to account for why that second line is not very bright. But try your best to measure it if you can. Now you may need to open up the slit in order to see that second line. Uh, so uh, you can read that if you're able to, uh, but I'd like you to be honest. If you're not able to see that line, don't record it in your notebook. Don't simply say that it's there because some person with authority said that it was there. Just record what you honestly are able to see for yourself. So this is the grading spectroscope and you'll find it just like this when you come into the lab. What I'd like to do is to remove the top so that you can see the various components of the instrument and understand what their functions are. So just take out the screw and show you what's inside. The slit where the light comes into the instrument is at the front end right here. And if you recall the schematic diagram that we drew on the board, I indicated this as a variable slit. It's actually not. The variable part is right here inside the instrument. It's a pair of razor blades mounted on springs and the separation between the razor blades is adjusted by this little knob right here. Now there's really no need to draw the knob on your diagram. That's uh, not essential to understanding how the instrument works, but you need to know that the knob is here. The function of this is to let more light into the instrument if you need it. But there's a trade-off. If you open the slit, that reduces the resolution of the instrument. It makes the lines of the spectrum wider and uh, thus that reduces your ability to locate the position of the line. So be aware of the trade-off between the precision of the measurement and the width of the slit. More width is more light, of course, makes it easier to see, but uh, narrower width makes the measurements more precise. So uh, adjust the width of the slit with this knob if you need to let more light in, in order to see especially the violet line, uh, the fourth violet line. Now the light travels from the slit through the diffraction grating. So this is the part of the instrument that resolves the spectrum into its component wavelengths. And the observer looks through the eyepiece right here, uh, guided towards this illuminated scale. Now another piece of the apparatus that you don't need to draw on your diagram is this little button switch which turns on 
uh, the light bulbs that illuminate the scale. Again, don't bother drawing this on your diagram, but you need to know that it's there in order to make the measurements. So you press the button when you're ready to make the measurements and record as precisely as you can where the line falls on the scale and uh, indicates the precision of the measurement. All right, so you'll find the apparatus like this when you come into the laboratory. The important details are to have the center of the spectrum tube positioned roughly at the same level as the slit on the spectroscope. And you turn on the spectrum with the switch on the side. Then you'll have to look through the eyepiece of the instrument and position the base just move the spectroscope back and forth in front of the spectrum tube until you maximize the brightness of the spectrum. So looking through the eyepiece toward the illuminated scale, just watch the lines until they are as bright as you can get them. And press the button to make the measurement of the line. Uh, one important detail about the spectrum lamps is that they don't like to be left on too long or the hydrogen light starts to get a little bit dim. So I recommend just making one measurement of one line and switching it off, record your data in your notebook and then switch on the tube again, uh, make a measurement of the next line, record that in, or turn off the lamp, give it a chance to rest, record that in your notebook and repeat that until you've got all of the wavelengths recorded. And once again, if you're having a hard time seeing that fourth violet line in the spectrum, which is rather dim for real physical reasons that we will get into in class, use the knob to change the width of the slit, let in a little more light, and uh, then record the position. And that's it. So just to summarize, you make measurements of the three or four visible lines in the hydrogen spectrum, record them as precisely as you are able to do with some estimate of the uncertainty in the reading. And so then we will analyze the data and be able to gain some insight into the structure of atoms by uh, analyzing the spectrum.